Here in Maya, I have a character who I've rigged for basic movement for gameplay. So I have controllers attached to his joints and IKs set up on his arms and legs so he can move around in a game after I animate him pretty easily. However, he doesn't have a very convenient way for me to animate smaller details like his hands. So I have like a regular wrist controller that I can move around, but if I ever wanted to animate his fingers, I would have to grab the skeleton, or grab the joints, and rotate them and key the rotate channels in the joint. And I would have to do that for all three of his joints that he has here. And that can be super painful because if you look here, if I were to do a simple grip animation here, so I'm gonna key the Z channel here at one and 30 and do a little bend, if you look in the hierarchy or the uh, the animator here, you'll see this one finger now has three different channels for animating that one simple movement. And if I ever wanted to edit this, I would have to go in here and be I'd be dealing with these three different channels. And now imagine that for all the fingers, I'd have three channels for each finger. And so, with a character with two hands, that can be pretty crazy and very time consuming. This is where set driven keys come in and it's super convenient for this exact purpose. Uh, to start your set driven key, you're gonna want some place where you can control each finger that you're gonna be driving with these animations. So just for convenience sake, I'm gonna select the hand controller here. So with this hand controller selected, I'm gonna come up here to modify and I'm gonna go to add attributes and I'll get this window here. And this is where we can start creating our own attributes for the channel box. So for starters, I'm going to do finger index there. And down here in the attributes, I'm going to set negative 10 and 10 for the minimum and maximum. And the default, I'm going to leave at zero. So when I hit add, you'll see over here in the channel box, I have a new finger attribute set at zero. Now, if you click this and you middle mouse scrub, you'll see it goes between a range of negative 10 and 10, just like we set. Now we can come right back over here into this attribute box and move on to our next finger. So I'm gonna go to finger, middle. I'm gonna tab down in the maximum. I'm gonna set the same thing, negative 10, 10, and zero, and add that. And again, pops right up over here in the channel box. So let me just do the rest of the fingers. The little finger, minus 10, 10. add. And I'm going to do the thumb. Minus 10 and 10. And add that. So now we have four new channels here that will make control all four fingers later on. So you can close out of that. Something that you might find important is that when you're setting these names, you want to leave them indiscriminate of which side of the character they're on. So normally when you're making a rig, you write like L finger index, a left finger index. In this case, you might not want to do that because when you set up these attributes in the other hand over here, you might want to shift select the other controller, select all these and control them all at the same time. If they were set to right and left, Maya wouldn't be able to do that for you. So in my circumstances, most circumstances, I prefer leaving it undefined. Our next step now is to actually set the driven keys. So for that, we go to animate, we go down to set driven key, and we click set. And we get this new set driven key window here. And now I want you to look at the bottom here. We have two buttons that I want you to pay attention to. One is load driven and one is load driver. So driver, we've actually already set up our driver, which is gonna be the hand controller. So I'm gonna select this and click load driver. And now you'll see it's loaded this hand controller into the driver section. And it even includes our new attributes that we made. Index, middle, little, and thumb. So since we're gonna be starting with the index finger, because I like to, we're gonna select the index finger up here. That way Maya knows we're working with that attribute. Now we can select our driven, which are gonna be the joints in each finger. So I'm gonna select this hierarchy of joints and say load driven over here so by clicking this button. And that'll load in our three joints. Now I wanna select all three joints and I wanna associate this attribute 
with these transforms, the rotate transforms. So this, it could be anything you want, but for our purposes, we're gonna be using rotate Z. Now, before we key anything, let's just jump back over to our controller here and make sure that our finger index is at zero. That's because when we key, we're gonna be telling Maya that this attribute at zero is gonna be wherever the rotation of the Z of these joints are when we key it. So it is at zero. I'm gonna go back to my joints and I'm gonna hit key. And now you'll see that there is a key here on this channel. And that's indicated by the red here. So we can go back to our controller, select the finger index, and I'm gonna scrub to positive 10. And now back in my finger joints, select the hierarchy again, at positive 10, I want this to be a finger that's gripping all the way. So I'm gonna rotate on the Z axis until I reach a point where I think is like a maximum gripping rotation, which is about when it's touching the palm there. So I'm gonna just say uh, minus 70 is where I want it. I'll just type it up there. So now that these bones are positioned, we can hit key again. And just like before, Maya will remember this position, these rotations for these joints when we scrub to 10 in this attribute. So back in the hand controller, I'm gonna select the finger, the index finger. I'm gonna middle mouse and scrub to zero and back to 10. And you see we have movement already. And that's already saving loads of time because I just have to key this one channel at very simple increments between zero and 10 to get this gripping movement. And now the last thing we wanna do is scrub to negative 10 here because at this point we want the fingers to be extending a little bit upwards. So I'm gonna select the hierarchy and I'm gonna select all three joints and I'm gonna rotate them just like before, probably around 12 because I don't think your fingers can go too far up, but it is nice to have the extra motion for animation. So I'm gonna hit key and if we go back to our hand controller, we have the full range of gripping and extending on this hand. And so that's, that's pretty much the effect that we're going for. Uh, once you get into a rhythm, it's pretty easy to run through all the fingers this way and get all of these attributes controlling all the joints and their gripping animation. Let's run through this process one more time with the next finger. So I'm gonna select the hand controller and in the set driven key panel, I'm gonna select finger middle. Now I'm gonna select the middle finger joints, all three of them, and load them as my driven. After selecting all three of those, I'm gonna select rotate again and hit key immediately. Now I'm gonna go back to the hand controller, click on the middle one and scrub to 10. After selecting the fingers again, the finger joints, I'm gonna rotate these to where I think looks good for this value. I think negative 70 is gonna work okay here too. And I'm gonna key that. After selecting the hand controller again, I'm gonna go back to negative 10, grab these joints, rotate them up, maybe 12 again, looks like it'll work. And I'm gonna key that. So just like that, I already have full motion for the middle finger as well as my index finger so I can get some nice motion there. So I've gone through that process on all four of his fingers here. So now there is set driven key motion on all of them. So as I move them up and down, he clenches and spreads his fingers. So let me show you how simple it is to now animate these fingers with our set driven keys. So for initial movement, I'm gonna move his hand very quickly, animate his hand moving up and down. And now I'll use our set driven keys for the secondary motion. So I'm just gonna key at the beginning and the end of my animation. And now in these middle points, his fingers will go down and come up. So when I hit play, he has kind of like a floaty hand look. And now even better, since there's kind of like a funny curve going on there, it's very easy to edit these attributes. See, they list here in the animation editor 
as individual channels, which is awesome because now I'm not dealing with however many channels I might have had had to animating each of these joints, like I said before. So now I can just grab these, fix them a little bit here, and now we get a nice smooth animation of his floaty fingers waving goodbye to us because we're done.